Good evening and welcome to the live coverage of the Women's Michigan Basketball Exhibition Game, the first one of the season. We are back in the Chrysler Center and you are here with WCBN Student Radio. My name is KG Foley. And my name is Mary Kuznier. And we are here to bring you the first half of the first game of this season. It's time for another basketball season here in Ann Arbor. And it's an exciting one. It's a different one than I think what we've seen the past couple years from this team. This is going to be a completely different team. We have so many people that left two to the WNBA, one to Greece. So it's a new team. That means new chemistry needs to be built. But you know what that means? That means it can be in a very exciting season up ahead. Absolutely. Um, you know, two of the biggest players we lost were Leah Brown and Emily Kaiser, who put up, you know, serious points for this team. But not only were they star players, they were also veterans. They were leaders. They were captains and had been a part of the program for several years. So definitely a big hole that they're leaving behind um, that will be filled by three new transfers this year, um, which is a big number for this team who usually relies pretty heavily on the high school recruiting. Yeah, that's very true. And you know, that might mean that they really need some veteran talent on this team. They can't mm -hmm. always rely on the younger people to bring that leadership. So the three new graduate transfers, the team is gonna be heavily relying on them to bring that leadership. Absolutely. So we're looking at Lauren Hansen, who is number one. She is from Missouri. She started all 32 games for Missouri, and she'll be joining this team. And we also have Alyssa Brett from Western Michigan, who will be wearing number zero. She is a three-point shooter, which is definitely something that this team is going to need to make up for the deficit of points that Leah Brown and Emily Kaiser would usually put up. And then we also have Taylor Williams from Bowling Green. She will be wearing number 33. Um, and she is a player who averaged 13 points per game and 9.1 rebounds across her career at Bowling Green. So these are players with big numbers, you know, experience. They're also veterans in their own right. And they're definitely going to be big names, I think, on this team and seeing a lot of minutes possibly. What do you think? Yeah, like you said, what this team needs right now is scores. And all three of these individuals are graduate transfers. They all have over 1,000 points in their career in college, which is huge. Obviously, they played yeah, already four numbers. seasons, but yeah. that's what they need right now. Between the two WMA stars that we lost, um, they averaged 33 points per game last season. That's huge numbers for women's college basketball. Uh -huh. So they'll be relying on these new people to really bring up the scoring. Yes, absolutely. And while Leo Brown and Emily Kaiser were two of the top scorers, there was also Lila Feely up there who is back this year and will be a leader in her own right as a junior. She had a great breakout season last year as a sophomore, um, putting up serious numbers herself. She was averaging 16.7 points per game. She started in 24 out of the 26 games. We can expect to see her starting here again tonight. Uh, and she spent a lot of time playing basketball this summer. She was on Team USA, and she, Coach, Coach KBA says that she has been putting a lot of work into her game, and she's going to definitely bring it to the court. Yeah, what that means is that even though this season stopped last year after they lost to LSU, she mm -hmm. kept on playing. She kept on getting experience. And in a team, like we said, that is missing that older talent, that older leadership, that's going to be invaluable for this team. Absolutely. And, yeah, let's talk a little bit about last season. You know, they – they went pretty. They went to the second round of the NCAA tournament, which is great. You know, better than our. It's impressive. Better than our yeah. men's, um, and they had a a pretty strong season. They went 22 and 10 overall, and they did lose to the eventual champions LSU, a crazy great team in their own right. Um, so they're definitely coming off of that. They spent a lot of time this summer as a team. They played. They played in Europe. They beat the Canadian national team. They played with the transfers there, so this team has spent a little time on the court together, and they're going to step on the court for the first time together tonight here in the Chrysler Center. And it looks like we're just about to get started. And starting for each team, we have Lauren Hansen, Lila Filia, Jordan Hobbs, Whitney Solemn, and Taylor Williams for Michigan. And for the Cardinals, we have Jessica Massey, Alicia Jones, Lydia Meredith, Tyler Scheid, and Lauren Solemn. Here we go, and we're tipped. It's often it's knocked to Lauren Hansen. Quick pass down to Lila Filia. She steps into the paint. She puts it up. It's good. And a quick two points for Lila Filia right off the bat. And those are easy buckets that we're looking to get all night long, getting that chemistry going. Absolutely. Jones for the Cardinals looking for something. Passes to Scheid. Massey looks to go to the paint. She puts it up. And it's good. That's two points 
And this is a relatively tall team, the Michigan, uh, compared to uh, the opposers. So we're looking to them having a strong defensive inside. Lila Filia for the three. It's no good. Rebound by Meredith. Ball being brought down the court by Jones. Meredith looking for a pass. Passes it to Massey. Massey goes into the paint. She challenges it. Can't make it. And the foul is called. Looks like that'll be two shots for and number two. From listening to the commentary from the media day, we were able to get an insight of what this team really has to offer and look into these young ladies and what their lives are back at home. And they are honestly a very well-connected team. And what we heard from Winnie Solomon, who is starting tonight, she said in the offseason, they focused on getting their confidence at their highest and working on the fundamentals, which is obviously very important for a young team. Absolutely. Massey to take her first shot. No good. Whitney Solom also has a great relationship with new assistant coach Melanie Mori, who we'll be talking about later on in the broadcast. Massey for the second shot, and it's good. 3-2, Cardinals leaning Michigan with nine minutes here in the first quarter. Cardinals putting on some tough defense, doing a lot of pressure, and they forced a travel. And the ball will go back to the Cardinals in their side of the court. They're doing some really intense defense, like right up the second that the Wolverines get the ball, giving them no room. Inbounded in, under the paint, puts it up. Two more points for the Cardinals. Trying to get a quick transition down the court. Lila Filia with the ball, trying to find her way into the paint. Puts it up, finds it. Lila Filia already starting hot tonight. 5-4, Cardinals pushing down the court. Jones with the ball. Looking for Meredith, Meredith not there. Meredith with the ball. Back to, back to Solom, Solom can't take it. Into the paint, up and finds it. Jones with another layup. The Cardinals defense is all over the Wolverines. They are even struggling to transition down the court. A pass to Lila Filia was intercepted and knocked out of bounds by Meredith. It will be very interesting to see how this young team reacts to adversity this season, and this is a great test to see how they will do. Ball to be inbounded. Brown now on the court, Brown with the ball. Pulls back, looks for something. Finds Cam Schroeder, Cam Schroeder passes to Lila Filia. Lila Filia looking for Solomon, can't find her, decides to take it herself, goes under, hits the rim, bounces off, but Wolverines with the rebound, Hobbs at the top. Excuse me, Brown. Lila Filia for the three. And it's good. Lila Filia hot, pulling from the three, and she finds it. Cardinals quick transition back down the court. Jones trying to take it into the paint. Pulls in two defenders, can't find it. Throws it back up. The ball is thrown away. Lila Filia grabs it for an easy layup and two points for Lila Filia. It is now 9-7, Michigan I mean, leading. All points coming from Lila Filia. It's very interesting because that's what we saw last year. She's a high scorer, so we'll see how she responds to being able to move the ball and also being able to score the ball a lot more. Absolutely. She seems comfortable on this court. Ball to be inbounded by the Wolverines. We'll also see how the rotation is going to work for the Wolverines in this exhibition game. We're expecting to see almost everyone play today. Absolutely. We've already had some movement on the court. We have Macy Brown, freshman on the court getting her first few minutes on this team. She's with the ball right now, pulls a defender, can't do anything with it, finds Camp Schroeder. Camp Schroeder to Lila Filia at the top of the key, gets the pick set for her, tries to take it. Into the paint, can't make it, finds Macy Brown. Brown to Williams, the transfer. Williams goes to take it, she puts it up for two. And it is now 11-7 Wolverines. Seven minutes left here in the first quarter. Cardinals with the ball. Whistle called. Not sure what the call was. Offensive foul. Ball will be back to Michigan as they inbound it in to Macy Brown. Defender already on her way back court. Doing some dribbling, trying to get around. She's heavily guarded, but she finds Williams. Williams to Felia. Felia gets the pick set for her, can't find it. The Cardinals are all over the Wolverines, and they managed to steal the ball from Lila Felia as they head back to their side. They slow it down at the top of the key with Walker with the ball. Puts up a three, no good. Williams with the rebound. 
trying to quickly get back before the Cardinals can get on them. Williams in the paint with a spin move and she almost makes it, but the defense is all over her. There's a fight for the ball on the ground. It'll be called a jump ball and it'll be the Cardinals. The Cardinals with the ball. The Cardinals defense is really taking me by surprise here. They are all over the Wolverines knowing that this is a strong team, knowing that they're strong shooters. They don't even want to give them the chance. They really are. And even though this is an exhibition game for a Division II school, they're coming in here as the underdogs and they really want to come out with a win. Absolutely. Ball inbounded. And that will be Walker for the Cardinals, bringing it down the court. Macy Brown waiting for her. Following her around the key, can't find it. Tough defense, can't find any moves, trying to move their way into the paint. Solom with the ball, Solom tries to put up the layup. It's no good, but a foul is called. But I think it's an offensive foul. Offensive foul. Offensive foul, ball will be back to the Wolverines. Great defense from both of these teams. Very interesting that Wolverines are in a 2-3 zone when they're so much bigger than the opposers. You would expect them to be man-to-man, -man, but Coach KVA, she knows what she's doing. She's a tenured coach here. <laughs> she knows what she's doing. She has spent a lot of time with these teams, with this team, and a lot of time with a lot of girls on these teams. All right, ball will be inbounded by the Wolverines. Williams finds Camp Schroeder. Camp Schroeder back to Williams, but it's stolen from her, but Williams blocks the shot as the Cardinals try to put up a sneaky layup, but Williams is there. Way to get back on her part. And that's what Michigan needs to do, use their size against this small team. Absolutely. Cameron Williams is six foot three, and she uses that to her advantage whenever she can. Ball to be inbounded to the Cardinals. In the paint. Try to put up the layup. It's no good. Tough defense as Williams tries to bring it back down the court for the Wolverines. It's 11-7 with five minutes and 48 seconds left here in the first quarter. Macy Brown looking to take it. She can't find it. Camp Schroeder for the three. And it finds the bottom of the net. And that's three for Camp Schroeder. 14-17. Michigan leading the Cardinals. Five minutes and 33 seconds left here in the first quarter. Cardinals with the ball. Around the perimeter. Jones with the three. Bounces off. Wolverines there for the rebound. Williams gets it. Foul is called. And Williams has been a strong rebounder today. She already has three rebounds, and uh, they're going to keep on utilizing that size. And she's going to be boxing out and using her six foot three height to keep on getting those rebounds. Absolutely, that's what she does. She is a strong, strong defender for the Wolverines, and she's also one of the leaders of this team as a senior herself and a returning player. Ball to be inbounded by the Wolverines. Defense tough on them, looking for the pass. Cam Schroeder with the ball. She finds Lila Filia as they quickly transition down. Lila Filia takes it into the paint, and she muscles it up and puts it through the net. I and mean, the good thing is they've been able to practice their press break the whole game, which is something they'll be using for sure for the rest of the season. Absolutely. Walker for the Cardinals with the ball. Macy Brown on her. Gets a double team. Passes it around the perimeter. Up for the three. And that's clean. Cardinals put up a three. It is now 16-10, four minutes and 51 seconds. Lila Filia drives, and she gets the foul called, but no shot is put up. There has just been no answer for Filia this game. She is getting everything at her own will. It's just shown that she is above the level of the rest of these girls. Absolutely. She has such a presence on the court. Even just within the first quarter here, you know that she is confident, she is strong, and she is ready to be a sh power shot shooter for this team this season. So what did you see this this first 10 minutes as we take a quick time out here that you like from the Wolverines so far and what you think they might need to work on a little bit. I think I love the ball movement. That's super important mm -hmm. in a team, especially when you're getting pressured very heavily on defense. The last thing you want to see is one person taking all the dribbles and trying to maneuver through the whole defense. Mm -hmm. So I love that they're moving the ball. But what we would like to see is a cleaner press break. There have been, I think, around two to three turnovers off of that. Absolutely. And you just can't be giving those up, especially when it's going to be getting to a closer game. So even though this is an exhibition game and they're using it for practice, they want to run those live scenarios and they want to run them as if this is against a ranked AP team. So we do want to see them clean up on the press break, but I'm sure Coach KBA will have an answer to this. Absolutely. I think they might have not been prepared for the Cardinals to push up so quick on those transitions. And, you know, we've seen a couple of mishaps with those with those moves back down to the offensive side of the court. You know, you don't want to lose that possession. And I, I imagine as the game progresses, they'll start to figure that out a little more, figure out how to make those transitions a little cleaner. 
Um, but I also have been really impressed with their defense, and I know that defense is a big thing for the team this year. They're really strong defenders last year. They're a top defending team, and you know, with players like Cameron Williams, who is really strong, really strong in presence in the paint as a rebounder. But you know, Coach KBA said that if you want to play, if you want to be a starter on this team, you have to be ready to defend. Yeah, to me, the stars of this game right now on defense have been the forwards, the guards. They've been letting up some two open three-point shots, in my opinion. But we have around, we have only one block right now, but we have seen that they have been recovering very well off of those turnovers. Yeah. And there have been no easy buckets down in the paint. And that's what you want to see off of this young but aggressive Wolverines women basketball yes. team. Cameron Williams with, with that block, you know, she lost the ball, but she was ready and right there to defend, didn't give up, you know, defense, Defense wins games just as much as three-pointers, just as much as shots. And I'm really excited to see how the defense develops on this team. You know, Lila Feely even talked about it for her own game when she played at Team USA this summer. She said that on that team, she wasn't really a shooter. She was more of a defender, and she's going to be focusing on that for herself too. Defense will be so important for this team. Like we said, they lost some of their high scores. Yes. So they're going to be looking for these other options to be able to win these games, especially they're going to be closer if they can keep this defensive core going. Absolutely. We're looking to get back started here after a quick timeout. It is 16-10, Michigan leading the Cardinals here in the Chrysler Center in Ann Arbor for their first exhibition game of the season. We are here in the first quarter with 4 minutes and 49 seconds left. The Cardinals with four fouls, Michigan with zero. Lila Filia gets to the line for two shots. And Lila Filia has played the entire game, if I'm not mistaken. She has... Oh no, she subbed out once, but she's played the most minutes on the team, and this is showing you why, because she's able to score at will, and she's able to put ultimately points on the board for a team that lost two of their star scorers. Yeah, Lyle Fila makes two, both of her foul shots. She puts a little pressure on the Cardinals' deep offense as they try to make their way back down. And now we see some pressure from Michigan off the press. Yeah, they're here to answer with that defense. Camp Schroeder heavily on Jones. Jones with some movement, passes it to Meredith. Whistle's called. Offensive foul. Those are three offensive fouls now for SVSU, which is great on the defensive part of Michigan for forcing those. Absolutely. Inbounded to Macy Brown, the freshman. She's getting a lot of minutes here tonight. Pulls in a defender, moves her way around, and is an offensive foul called on her. This seems to be quite an aggressive game here tonight from both teams, not only offensively, not only defensively, but also offensively. I mean, that's what we want to see from an exhibition game right before the season starts next week. We want to see aggression. We want to see how this team responds to adversity. Ball inbounded. That'll be Jones bringing it down the court for the Cardinals. Ball intercepted by Cam Schroeder. Cam Schroeder pushes into the paint. She pulls in three defenders. Ball bounces off out of her hands, and it is taken back by the Cardinals as they quickly move back to their side. Tough pass to Stratford. Stratford puts it up. It's no good. Quick movement all around here as Williams brings it back down. She takes it into the paint. She muscles it up, and it is blocked out of her hands and pushed out of bounds. It'll be the Wolverines' ball. And we're looking here for the Wolverines to slow down the offense a bit. That's been two straight possessions when they've got in a good defensive break, but they've just been rushing it, trying to go coast to coast with it. So what we really want to see is some ball movement here, get other people involved. Some quick substitutions. We have Hanson, Felia, Camp Schroeder, Stuck, and Williams. And that will be Taylor Williams, as we now have two Williams on the team. Ball is inbounded to Williams. Lila Fila looks for the three, doesn't take it. Passes out to Cam Schroeder. Cam Schroeder maneuvers around a defender. Passes it around to Hansen for the three. Bounces out, no good. Cardinals get the rebound as they move down the court. That'll be Solemn with the ball. Solemn to Meredith. Meredith looking to take it into the paint. She puts it up, and she puts it through. Finds her way in and puts up two more points for the Cardinals. It is now 18-12. Three minutes and 27 seconds left here in the first quarter. Some tough defense as Michigan struggles to transition. Finds William under the net. Williams puts it up. Doesn't make it through, but she pulls the foul. And that was an almost perfect ball moving down the floor. Other than missing the layup, but she drew the foul. That's exactly what Coach KBA would like to see off a press break. Ball movement quick. Keep the defense on their toes. And ultimately, an easy layup or two easy free throws. Two easy free throws. They should be easy. Free throws or free throws. 
I always like to say free throws win games. <laughs> but that's a personal opinion. Puts up the first one. No good. Jinxed it. My bad. And these forwards are going to have to nail these free throws because they're going to be getting fouled a lot throughout these games, especially being a tall team. So they're going to have to work on those free throws and really be able to nail them. Williams misses both, but Lilophilia pulls the rebound back to Lilophilia. Lilophilia decides not to take it, puts up the three, and that was Hansen with the three from downtown. Great recovery from that. Michigan tough defense. Whistle is called. And on the previous possession, Filia was the one that moved the ball and got that assist. And that's what she said on the offseason. She knew she was going to have to be a large scorer for this team. But she said for her to be able to score a lot, she's going to have to move, be able to move the ball well so she can get some pressure off of her when she does need to be able to take over. Absolutely. Timeout Cardinals as it is 21-12 here with three minutes left in the first quarter. And I think right now it's a great time to talk about the coaching staff for the Wolverines. They have a star-studded coaching staff. They have, they're led by their head coach, KBA, Kim barnes Rico, And this is her 12th season as the Wolverines head coach. And not by surprise, she is the winningest coach in program history. She is the only coach with 200 wins in program history. And throughout her 12 year, her 11 year tenure here, she has led the U of M Wolverines to 10, 20 win seasons. And I mean, that's just, incredibly incredibly impressive no matter where you are or what sport you are in right absolutely i mean she is a really big part of this team's personality their identity their confidence she knows this team she knows how to play she knows how to bring out the best in her in her youngest in her oldest and she i think she's really good at developing team chemistry yeah. as we get back to play here and last season she won the big 10 coach of the year which was a great achievement by her back to play hansen with the ball Tough defense, pick gets set for her. She drives it in, can't make it through. Passes it back out to Stuck around the perimeter. Some ball movement from the Wolverines, looking for something. Foul is called, and it'll be the Michigan's, it'll be the Wolverines' ball. Is that at the line? Was that a shot? I think that is on the ground, I believe. Ball oh, will be in, oh, it's two throws. shots. And the Wolverines have found an ease to be able to get into the paint and get either fouled or put up easy layups, which is something that we like to see, especially off of a small opposing team. Hansen to put up the first. And it finds its way in after a couple bounces around the rim. Second shot for Hansen. Puts it through. Easy two points for Hansen. And Williams Michigan pressure the ball. Pressing. Heavy defense, ball is thrown down, put up, and it's in. That is Massey for two for the Cardinals. Hobbs with the ball, Hobbs passes it to Hanson. Hanson quickly trying to move it down, finds Williams. Williams puts it into the paint, fades away for a shot, and it bounces off the rim. But Schro Cam Schroeder is there with the rebound. Excuse me, stuck with the rebound. Stuck with the ball, looking for a pass. Hobbs with the ball, finds Williams. Williams decides to take it, throws it out to Woodson. Woodson puts it up, off the board and into the net. That was a tough finish, great layup. Great movement around there and they were able to find Woodson under the, under the net. Woodson tries to intercept the ball but taps it out, slows down the Cardinals transition. And Woodson has been playing great. She is a freshman and out of Minnetonka, Minnesota. So we'll see the impact that she will be able to have on this team as a freshman. Definitely exciting to see the two new freshmen getting some time tonight. That is what exhibition games are for. And I feel like they've both had some great presence on the court so far tonight as the Cardinals inbound the ball. Mao with the ball. It seems as if Michigan has moved to a man defense. Mao puts up the shot and the offensive foul is called on Mao as the Wolverines put up a tough wall. And the shot is no good as Michigan will inbound and the ball will be in their possession. We have a minute 40 left here in the first quarter. Ball thrown to Hobbs. Back to Woodson. Woodson puts it up, bounces off. Stuck there for the rebound. 
Ball back to Stuck. Stuck for the three. Rolls just off the rim, and the Cardinals will grab the rebound. Riley for the Cardinals on the court now. She has the ball. Hanson tough on her. Can't find anything. Meredith looking to get into the paint. Williams gets around Williams and puts up two for the Cardinals. The second chance opportunities for the Wolverines have been great. They just have to keep on finishing on those. And those rebounds have been very helpful for this team. The Wolverines had a quick transition down the court with a few beautiful passes and they found Williams under the court who put up an easy layup. It is 27-16, 49 seconds left here in the first quarter. Wolverines keeping them at the perimeter. Meredith looking to get into the paint. Woodson is tough on her. And Williams intercepts the pass and she makes her way down for an easy layup. Oh, and it bounces off the rim. No good, and a foul is called on the Wolverines, an offensive foul. An unfortunate little mishap there, which should have been an easy layup for Williams, but it just rolled out. And Williams has been great defensively this game. She has four rebounds, one block, so she has really been a great player right now. Absolutely doing what her, what her goal is for this team. Cardinals quickly trying to move down the court. 28 seconds left on the clock here in the first quarter. Wolverines putting the pressure on. And a foul is called. 10 second violation on Ten SVSU. Violation. Just showing how great the Michigan Wolverines defense has been up to this point of the game. Stop the Cardinals from even getting across the half court and the ball will be back in the Wolverines' hands in the last 21.9 seconds here in the first quarter as they lead 27 to 16. Ball inbounded to Hanson. Defended by Walker. Walker has got her hands up. She finds the pass to Hobbs. Hobbs backs to Hanson. They're taking a second to settle, looking for something. Hanson looks like she's gonna go, but she throws it out to Hobbs. Four seconds left on the clock. Hobbs takes it. She finds Stuck, and Stuck puts it up for a buzzer beater layup. And that is a great ball movement that we'd like to see from the Wolverines. Absolutely incredible ball movement to end the half. And we are at the end of the first quarter here in the Chrysler Arena as the Michigan Wolverines lead the Cardinals 29-16 to 16 in the first exhibition game of this season. What an exciting first quarter. We saw a lot of players on the court. We saw a lot of movement. We saw a lot of different lineups. What did you see that you liked? What players were standing out to you? I think Williams for sure stood out defensively. Offensively, she was the buckets for her were not falling as easily as I'm sure she would have liked. But at the end of the day, those easy layups are going to come around. But defensively, she has been tenacious. Also, something that I'd love to see is how aggressive the freshmen have been. They know they have to fight for all these minutes. They are great players, and seeing them really fight on defense and on the press has been very impressive. Absolutely. It's super exciting to see the freshmen get some time on the court and their confidence to step on and really try and make a presence, I think, just speaks to the um, energy that this team has. I feel like it's very clear that this team knows each other. They are close. They are communicative. Um, the passing that we've seen is beautiful. That last layup there in the last five seconds of the quarter was great movement all around. There seems to be a lot of trust. There seems to be a lot of intuition between each of the players. And I'm really excited to see how that develops the rest of the season. What are you seeing from Saginaw Valley that is strong? Saginaw Valley, Valley came out like they were the underdogs. They really came out and really wanted to put the pressure on Michigan. But towards the end of the quarter, they were letting up a little bit. Who knows if they're starting to get tired or if the Michigan Wolverines were just being too much for them. But they are putting up competitions, 29 to 16. One would expect it to be a larger spread, but also it's an exhibition game. Many players are playing. And what we see from when the starters are in, Layla Filia, she has 13 points. She almost has half of the Wolverines points. So we know that more damage can be done if the, all the starters played. But that's not the point of this game. We want to see everyone come in and see what they have to offer for this team. Absolutely, yes. Layla Filia has been putting up some really big points. She has 13 points so far this game of the Wolverines, 29. This is the behavior we are expecting from her this season. She has been named first team all Big Ten. And, you know, last season she was averaging 16.7 points per game. I imagine that number is going to be higher this year as she fills in for Leah Brown and Emily Kaiser. Um, and she's definitely going to be a leader for this team. And she's been a leader on the court tonight as we get ready to start the second quarter here in the Chrysler Arena. 
at the end day, the Wolverines are working towards another NCAA tourney appearance, and this is the start of that journey. And we're on Alyssa Crockett on the court now. Hanson with the ball at the top of the key. Jones is tough on her. She finds Isla Felia. Felia back to Crockett, to Hanson. Hanson looks for the pass, and it is blocked by Jones for Saginaw Valley and is put out of bounds, and Hanson will inbound it in. And nope. this is what we Switch. saw at the start Lyle of the quarter, of last quarter, some tenacious defense from Saginaw Valley. Absolutely. Isla Felia finds it into Hobbs. Hobbs throws it to Crockett. Crockett to Lila Felia. Lila Felia looks to take it into the paint. She fades away, and it's clean. It is a clean two for Lila Felia. She keeps finding those shots, and she's not afraid to take them. And her jump shot is just so clean. You can tell that her offseason really revolved around that. Ball and Cardinals part of the court. Ball tipped away, and it's retrieved by the Cardinals. They slow down a little bit. Stratford with the ball. Jones looking for a pass. Defense is all over it. Jones for the three. Bounces off the rim. And Lila Felia with the grab. Lila Felia looks to take it. Puts up another. Bounces in and out. Fight for the rebound on the floor. And it's a jump ball. And it will be Saginaw Valley's. And Felia just loves those little mid-range jump shots. She loves running up the core, making people think like she's going to pass the ball, dish it out to the inside or the outside, and then she just pulls up from around 15 feet. And those are almost always cash for her. Yeah, she's very comfortable with that shot, and we'll be seeing it a lot from her this season. Ball inbounded to Jones for the Cardinals. Lila Felia waiting for her. Pass to Solemn. Solemn with the ball, back to Jones. Jones looking for a lane, can't find it. Out for the three, no good. Retrieved by Hobbs for the rebound. Back to Lila Felia. Lila Felia looking for a pass. She finds Crockett and a foul is called on the Cardinals. Michigan has been great in transition this game. They've been getting quick rebounds and just pushing the ball forward. We've rarely seen them really set up on offense and take it down the court slow. They're really trying to push the ball and make Saginaw Valley run after them. I think the tough defense from Saginaw Valley is forcing them to get quick with their transitions, which is great practice for them here. Ball inbounded by Hansen to Crockett. Crockett looking for Felia. Felia almost gets it under the net, but accidentally puts a foul up for herself as the Cardinals will get the ball. And we have seen many offensive fouls this game. I would say more than usual. There's around seven offensive fouls from both teams, so that is something to watch. Definitely seems to be an aggressive game from both teams as the Cardinals bring the ball back down. Lila Felia waiting for Jones. Pick set on Lila Felia for Jones. Jones can't find the lane, but she looks for another. Stuck in the paint as the Wolverines are all over her. She kicks it out. She kicks it out for a three, and it's no good. But Cardinals with the rebound. A crazy little throw up there. Hoping for a shot, but it's no good as Lila Felia brings it back down the court for the Wolverines. She finds Crockett. Crockett finds Williams under the net, and Williams puts it up, and it's good. Great ball movement again, and it seems to be that the Wolverines have moved back to a zone-looking defense. It is 33-16, the Wolverines leading the Cardinals here with seven minutes and 36 le seconds left here in the second quarter. Lila Filia with the steal, throws it out to Hansen. Hansen tries to find Crockett, wild pass, can't find her, put out of bounds. Ball will head back to Cardinals possession. And that's going to happen, so a new team chemistry is not where they exactly want it to be yet like they had last year when it was a much more closer team because they all have played together for a long time. So those mishaps are going to happen, but it's okay because throughout the season they're going to get all closer together and chemistry will come with that. Now's the time for mistakes here in the exhibition game, which we can expect to see. Jones with the ball for the Cardinals. She finds Sikowski. Sikowski looking for a lane. Passes it to Mao. Mao back out to Sikowski. Puts up the three. It's an air. Those and the Wolverines fight. Balls. Fight for the rebound, forces a jump ball, and it'll be the Wolverines. Hobbs on the floor fighting for it. Hobbs really taking to that defensive mentality. We've seen her all over the court tonight defensively. A really aggressive performance from her tonight, and I'm really enjoying that presence from her. 
Yep, Saginaw Valley also ha now has two straight air balls from the three points, so we give credit to that for the great perimeter defense from the Wolverines. Crockett to inbound the ball to Brown. Macy Brown back on the court, the freshman for the Wolverines. She quickly moves down, looking for a lane under the net. She puts it up off the board and finds its way through. That's two points for the freshman, Macy Brown. Macy Brown. Cardinals slowed down by the Michigan defense. Mao with the ball at the top of the key, passes it to Zazowski. Zazowski looks for the lane, maneuvers around the defenders, puts it up, but it's no good, and Hobbs with the rebound. Hobbs tosses it to Felia, quickly trying to move down the court. Stops and kicks it back out to Hobbs. Hobbs for three. Nothing but net for Hobbs. It is just incredible to see how Felia attracts the defense. When she goes in, the defense is just forced to collapse around her because if they don't, that means she'll get any easy layup or an easy jump shot. But if they do, then she knows the three points going to be open. So Felia with some great ball movement on her hand. She has right now 15 points, but also two assists. So we love the way that she's moving the ball right now. That was a great sequence between Hobbs and Lila Felia. Hobbs with the quick rebound, that defense that we've been wanting to see from these players. She moves it down the court, passes it to Felia. Felia tracks those defenders, like you were saying, and she knows that. And she kicked it out to Hobbs at the three-point line. And she took that shot, and it was a great shot. Yeah, and let's talk a little bit about freshman Macy Brown, who's on the court right now. And she's from East Grand Rapids, Michigan. And from the media day, what she told us is that Michigan has always been her dream school. She has always wanted to play here since she was a little girl. And right now is her dream come true. She finally is on the court as a freshman for the Wolverines. So it's great to be able to experience that for her. And she also uses number two. And when asked about why she's in number two, she gave a rather simple answer. She said her sister used number two in high school, and then when her sister left, she just took over number two, and it, since then, it's just stuck. So great to see a family. I love that. I always love her. hearing why players choose their numbers. Yeah. I was number two in high school myself, but that's because I was obsessed with Derek Jeter. <laughs> <laughs> We're in a timeout here in the Chrysler Arena as the Michigan Wolverines face their first opponent of this season, Saginaw Valley State University Cardinals. It is 38 to 16 with six minutes and 27 seconds left here in the second quarter. We've seen some great play from the new Wolverines, new faces, new players, new dynamics, but a lot of the old too. A lot of Lilophilia, a lot of Hobbs, a lot of Williams. But let's talk about the transfers and what they've been doing so far tonight. The transfers seem to have been playing great. They are the oldest on the team. The, all three of them are graduates. So it's great to see that experience. We'll, we'll, I guess we'll see how that experience will really translate to the court when the games really do count. But this is a great start. Absolutely. Taylor Williams has been great tonight with four rebounds for the Wolverines. She had 65 offensive rebounds in her junior year um, at Bowling Green. So I'm really excited to see her bring that defensive power to this lineup. Yeah, and Taylor Williams, when I asked Amelia Day about the change of scenery, she said she was very excited. So we'll see how that translates right now. And we are back after the timeout. Walker for Cardinals bringing down the ball. Macy Brown on her. Passes it to Mao. Mao passes it to Massey. Massey looks for the lane. She puts it up, can't find it. Seems like a foul is called. That'll be a personal foul against Michigan as Massey takes to the line for two. Michigan has been rather good on not committing fouls on defense today. We have not seen the Cardinals at the line very many times. Massey puts up her first shot, and it's good. Massey takes her second shot, finds it through. That's two points for the Cardinals. It is now 38-17 with six minutes and 15 seconds left here in the second quarter. Macy Brown with the ball. Finds Crockett. Crockett defended by Scheid. Looks for Macy Brown again. Macy Brown back to Crockett. Crockett for three. It's an error, but the Michigan Wolverines are there for the rebound. Crockett gets another rebound, but it's stripped out of her hands, and the foul is called. And that's what we're talking about, how size is incredibly important in this sport and we're seeing right now those are two straight offensive rebounds and one of them came from the center that was all the way out on the perimeter so it's great to see that they're using their height absolutely crockett at the line ready to take her first shot and it's good 
the Michigan Wolverines wearing their all-white jerseys tonight as Saginaw Valley State University is in their all-red. Crockett for her second shot. And it's good. That's two points for Crockett from the line as Michigan now leads 40 to 17. Ball back in Cardinals territory. Jones with the ball, being kept to the perimeter. Passes to Mao. Mao to Massey, Massey heavily defended, but she dodges a few defenders, puts it up and finds it in. 40 to 19. Five minutes and 32 seconds left here in the second quarter. And the Wolverines seem to finally be slowing it down on offense and trying to run some plays now. Cam Schroeder heavily defended by Massey. Passes it to Crockett. Crockett looking for a pass. Delilah Filio almost gets knocked out of her hand, quickly recovers. Looks like she's looking for a lane. She takes it, she finds it, and it's blocked. That is a block by the Cardinals' number two, Massey, on Lila Filia. Great defensive move by the Cardinals there, cutting Lila Filia off before she can put it up. And Lila Filia will inbound it in. Filia to Solemn. Solemn up. Nope. Excuse me, Lila Filia from downtown puts it up, and it's good for three. That is a great inbound play. Lila Philly with 18 points here tonight. Ball back in Cardinals territory. Heavy defense, Lila Philly on Jones. Jones trying to find the lane, goes under the net, kicks it back out to the three-point line to Walker. Walker drives. It's no good. As a that is a blocking foul along the Wolverines. And that'll put Walker at the line for two. Some substitutions for Saginaw Valley State University. And we've really seen almost all the Wolverines players get on the court at this time. I think we're only missing one or two, but it's great to see that most of the players are getting some action. We have Walker, Massey, Meredith, Stafford, and Solomon for Saginaw Valley State. As Walker puts up her second free throw, and it's good. Macy Brown quickly trying to maneuver around. She has great dribbling. Out to Crockett. Crockett back to Brown. Brown looking for a lane. Muscles it up, puts it in. And if you're wondering why we keep on saying solemn for both teams, that is because there are two solemns. There is Lauren Solemn on Saginaw Valley and Whitney Solemn on the Wolverines. Ball stripped out of the Cardinals' hand. Brown throws it down to Lila Filia. Back to Brown. Brown looks for Cam Schroeder. Cam Schroeder puts it up from the free throw line and it's good for two. And Lauren Solomon and Winnie Solomon also both wear number 25. Jones for the Cardinals with the ball. Out to Solom. Solom to Massey. Heavily defended by Schroeder, Cam Schroeder. Massey takes on Cam Schroeder, puts it up, and it's no good. Macy Brown at the perimeter, finds Crockett down low, drives into the paint, tries to put it up, gets blocked by the Cardinals, and was that a foul called? I do not think that was a foul called, it was just a block. But Michigan has been moving the ball great, just once they're getting to the perimeter, sometimes their shots are getting blocked, but that is completely fine because <laughs> at one point or another, they're going to fall in or they're going to get fouled. So great ball movement on the Wolverines' part. We'll take it. A lot of shots put up by the Wolverines, which is what we definitely want to see. Ball inbounded to Williams. Back to the top to Brown. Brown tries to find Williams in the paint. Struggles to keep it in there. She moves her way back out. She looks for a lane. Finds Woodson. Woodson puts it up. Bounces in and out. Whistle called. Seems to be a foul on Macy Brown. I believe on Oh, Lord. on Woodson. Woodson will take two shots at the free throw line. And Michigan has been shooting the ball incredibly up until this point in the game. They're 18 for 32 for a 56.3 percentage, and that is just as good as you would like to see. Also from the free throw line, they are right now seven for nine from the free throw, which are also great numbers. Woodson makes her first free throw, gets ready to take her second. 
and it finds its way in. It is now 49 to 21, the Wolverines leading the Saginaw Valley State University Cardinals with three minutes and 14 seconds left in the second quarter. And Michigan seems to be finding their flow right now on offense. Saginaw Woodson State. on Jones. Williams putting heavy pressure. Wild pass recovered by the Cardinals. Meredith with the ball at the top, looking for a lane, can't find it. Tough defense by Stuck on her. She puts up the shot, it's no good. Cardinals with the rebound, kicks it back out to the three. Stafford for the Cardinals tries to put up the three and it's no good. They get the rebound, kick it back out. Look for the three again. Wolverines say no. Passing around the perimeter, looking for a lane. Dazowski tries to find it into the paint. She kicks it back out again to the three. Shot clock at four seconds, looking for anything. Cardinals push into the paint, put it up, and it's blocked. And a foul is called on the Wolverines. With .3 seconds left. That was great defense on the Wolverines against Saginaw Valley. They were moving the ball great, Saginaw Valley, but Michigan was recovering well from all those passes. And just with .3 seconds on the clock, they were able to draw a foul on the Wolverines. Stafford will take it to the line for two shots. After a shot clock wind down possession. Takes the first. And that's one. And the Wolverines have been playing great perimeter defense. They have forced Sajjan Valley to go one for eight from the free from the three point line. That's a twelve point five percent. Puts up the second, and it's good. Two minutes and 17 seconds left here in the second quarter. As the Wolverines lead 49 to 23, we have Brown, Camp Schroeder, Woodson, Stuck, and Williams on the court for the Wolverines as Brown will bring it down. And we are seeing great minutes from the freshmen on the Wolverines. Lila Filia to Woodson at the top of the three. Pick gets set for her by Williams. Kicks it out to Brown. Kicks it out to Feely at the three. Philia looks for a lane, can't find it, finds Stuck. Stuck finds Brown at the top from downtown. No good for Brown. The Cardinals with the rebound. A current trend that we're seeing right now is that there have been no field goals, made field goals for Sajjana Valley for the last three minutes and 50 seconds. A minute and 37 seconds left here in the second quarter. Wolverines leading 49 to 23. Shot clock at 14 for Sajjana Valley. Michigan keeping them at the perimeter. Stuck strips the ball out of Dzgowski's hand, throws it down to Williams, but it's intercepted by McCullough for the Cardinals as it'll be back in Cardinals' possession. And there's been a scoring drought on both teams right now. There's been no made field goals for the past two minutes and 40 seconds for either team. Dzgowski from way downtown, no good. Cardinals with the rebound, try to put it up one more time. No good again as Lila Filia with the rebound, passes it to Whitson for a mid-jump shot. No good, pushed out of bounds on the Wolverines. It'll be the Cardinals ball. With 59.7 seconds left here in the second quarter, Michigan Wolverine, Wolverines leading 49 to 23. And uh, the scoring drought seems to continue for both teams. Nothing is falling for either of them. We've seen great ball movement on both sides, but nothing is falling right now. I think it's just speaking to the defense that we're seeing from both of these teams. They're aggressive, they are playing. They are not really treating this like an exhibition game. Which, which is something is that we love to see. We love to see <laughs> which that. Which is what Great we're defense. here for. Cardinals bringing the ball down. It'll be Riley with it. Riley to Dzgowski. Dzgowski at the perimeter. Stuck heavily on her. Stuck with the reach. I think the Cardinals stepped out of bounds, and now it'll be an inbound for the Wolverines with 45 seconds left here in the second quarter. Hanson, the transfer to bring it in. She finds a lane, she decides to take it, and she puts it in. And that's exactly what we're looking for from those transfers, so I'm easy buckets. Great presence tonight from Hanson. Cardinals quickly try to move it down with 30 seconds left, 24 on the shot clock. Hanson heavily on. Kicks it, to z kicks it out for a pass, and it's no good, and it goes out of bound, and the ball will be back in the Wolverines' hands for the last 22 seconds left in the second quarter. And that's the great thing when you're doing heavy rotations and uh, they're not playing more than five minutes at a time, everyone's fresh on defense and putting all the pressure they need. Hanson with the ball. Clock at 15 seconds, looking for a final shot. 
Hansen finds the lane, no good, and it is blocked and put out of bounds. And the ball will be back in the Cardinals' hands for 6.8 seconds left here in the second quarter. And we'll see if Sajina Valley can do anything with these seven seconds left. They are zero for five on the last field goals. Lila Filio putting some pressure on Jones for the Cardinals. Jones runs by Lila Filia, is met by two more Wolverine defenders. She puts it up for her last second shot, and it's no good. And that's the end of the first half of the Michigan women's first basketball game of the season. And it's been a really great first half here today as they face Saginaw Valley State University Cardinals in a tough defensive matchup, which we weren't really expecting. Despite the score being 51 to 23, it's definitely been quite an aggressive match um, matchup between these two teams. Let's talk a little bit about the defense and what we've been seeing. Let's start with Michigan. How's their defense looking? I mean, Michigan's defense looked absolutely stellar and top-notch for these past five minutes. They did not score. They scored only two points in those last five minutes, and you can't ask for anything better than that. I'm sure Coach KBA is very excited about how this Wolverines defense is playing. The forwards, the bigs, they are putting all the pressure down in the paint, and we also see the guards are flying around the perimeter and really able to contest almost every single shot. Absolutely. I mean, at the end there, like you said, it was the drought for the Cardinals. And, um, you know, you can see it in the score. It's 51 to 23. It was closer at the beginning. Wolverines did pull away with our, you know, our strong shooters. But I'm really excited to see the um, aggression and the ability to just stay in the defensive mindset from the Wolverines. You know, even when the ball gets taken away from them, they are quick to be back. They are quick to get back on on their opponents and they waste no time in their defensive transitions which has been really great to see and Saginaw Valley is really credible with setting the tone for this game you know they came out immediately putting hot pressure way back at the other end of the court before the Wolverines even crossed the half court line and it set the tone for this game and I think that's something that the Wolverines can appreciate a lot for an exhibition game a lot of times you're not expecting that hard of a run. No one wants to get injured. But I think this is the best practice that the Wolverines can get right now. They started the game off extremely hard, and they had to work for their buckets. It got a little bit easier down the stretch, but starting mm -hmm. like that, you can't ask for a better start. Yes, definitely got easier as they started to figure out the team a little bit. But this pressure has allowed, you know, freshmen like Macy Brown and freshmen like Taylor Woodson to get a little taste of what some competition feels like. And I really feel like those two stepped up. You know, they weren't afraid to take the ball. They weren't afraid to take shots. Um, we see Macy Brown, you know, at the top of the key a lot, trying to make plays, trying to make passes. Um, and that's been really great to see from both of those players. Macy Brown is leading with assists right now for the Wolverines with three. And Whitney Solemn is uh, leading in rebounds with four. And Lila Filia is leading in points with 18, which is what we expect to see from Lila Filia. Um, but it's exciting to see Macy Brown with two assists. She definitely seems to have a pretty strong presence so far tonight. And I think that's great because KB, Coach KBA said a few days ago that there are two starting spots up for grabs. And mm -hmm. I think that's really shown why the Wolverines are playing so aggressive. Everyone is really trying to do their part on the court because there are two spots open right now. And Coach KBA said that those two spots are going to go to people that really play the hardest and show that they can bring the best skill set to an already great other three players because they have great scoring with Filio right now, but they really need some defensive presence also to help her out because she can't keep on scoring at all times, especially when the teams get tougher. Absolutely, and we also have seen Jordan Hobbs have a great presence on the court tonight. She's a returning junior for the Wolverines. Her and Lila Filia had a great sequence together when Hobbs grabbed the rebound, quickly moved it down, passed it to Filia, and Filia back to Hobbs after she pulled in those defenders. Uh, Jordan Hobbs has two rebounds, two assists, and three points tonight. Um, and it seems that she might not be the strongest shooter, but I feel like when she's on the court, she's really good at moving the ball around. She's really good at making plays happen. She's also a very scrappy player herself, as we've seen her on the defense beat all over their, her opponent. Um, so I'm excited to see how she develops this season and more of a senior role on the team as a junior and as one of the few older returners on the team. And we can also talk a little bit about um, Taylor Woodson, who I feel like has really shown up tonight as a new transfer. Uh, she herself has gotten four rebounds. She has been under the net a lot, fighting for those, fighting for those rebounds to keep it either in possession or get a quick transition down the court. I agree. And what's really exciting for this team is that 
there it is a young team with few veterans. But what that means is that there's so much room for development. And mm -hmm. what's better than that than bringing in a current WNBA player to the coaching staff, Ariel <laughs> Atkins? How exciting is that? She currently very, plays very exciting for the Washington Mystics, and she is a assistant coach for player development. And that is incredible to have an Olympic gold medalist coaching Absolutely. the Wolverines. That is just talent that you can't reproduce another spot and we are sure to see it translate on the field so yes that absolutely. is super exciting i mean that is sort of this uh precedent that you set as a michigan wolverine is you're a winning team and you're going to bring in the best you're going to do what you can to win you know coach kba said it um she said it herself at one of the media days that you know when you're at the university of michigan everyone wants you to win a championship and she did talk about how she thinks this year there's going to be some ups and downs with a little bit of inexperience, you know, three new transfers transitioning into the team, two new freshmen, you know, big players being lost. But she thinks that this is going to put a little bit of a chip under the shoulder of her team. And, you know, with the strong coaching, uh, new coaches and, and the strong presence of players with experience, I think that combination can really progress into a strong development for this team as we see this season progress. Yeah, I mean... Like you said, the coaching is so important for such a young team, and mm -hmm. they have such a strong coaching core. They have they just brought in Melanie Mori, who for the past four years was a head coach at Xavier. So to have a head coach in that assistant coach role just adds even so much more experience that the Wolverines can learn from. She even played here. She even played professionally in Luxembourg and in Israel. So she also brings that professional aspect just like Ariel Atkins does. So this coaching staff is going to be a huge part of the success of the Wolverines this year. And uh, who knows, it could turn into a very successful season based off of how strong this coaching staff is. Absolutely. I think that there's, you know, also always just something great about being a little bit of an underdog. And especially if you're an underdog with strong coaching, I think that that combination of experience and talent with that drive and that desire to prove yourself I think that it could really push this Wolverines team this season. I mean, they're really looking for a new identity. They're looking for, you know, they're, all the players are looking for what their role is on this team because right now there isn't too much established. Like you said, there are two opening spots available on the starting lineup. We don't know who we're going to see in those every night. It could be the transfers. It could be the freshmen, depending on how the season progresses. But, you know, when you lose two star players that were graduates, that were captains, that were big big point scorers for the team there's definitely going to be a little bit of a transition area but i think that's also really exciting and that's a time to try new things and to push yourselves and with new coaches i think that we're going to see a lot from players that we know about but i think we're also going to see a lot from players who we haven't seen their full potential just quite yet yeah i guess for us fans it's so exciting that we don't know who's going to start the exactly. first game of this season. i think that's really fun you know and it, i think it's exciting you know you can count on a few players for sure but it's going to be exciting to see who rises, who starts to make a name for themselves, and um, just where the season is going to take us as we start here tonight with the Michigan Wolverines leading the Saginaw Valley State University Cardinals 51-23 to after the first half. Lila Felia leading with 18 points. We have four rebounds from two players on the team. We have it from Taylor Williams, our transfer, and we have four rebounds from uh, Whitney Solemn as well and we have the new freshman Macy Brown with three assists as she gets 20 minutes of playing no apologies 11 minutes of playing time tonight um, really exciting to see them on the court and as we enter the second half what do you think the Wolverines are going to be thinking about I think just because the lead now has grown so large to so 28 points we're going to see the freshmen play more. We're going to see the graduates play more. We're probably going to see Lila Filia not step on the court as much, but you know what? That might be a good thing because we'll be able to see how r scoring is going to happen in the regular season. We can't just rely on Lila Filia to bring all the scoring for the Wolverines. There's going to be there's going to be other people that need to be able to put up 10 plus points mm -hmm. every single Absolutely. game. Absolutely. So I guess we'll see how that plays out in this second half. Well, it's been so much fun calling this game here. 
tonight with you guys as we transition into our next two announcers, the wonderful Noel and Peter, who will be taking you to the end of this game. It's been so much fun calling this game. Anything to say? Any final thoughts for the Wolverines before we head out? I guess the only final thought we can say is go blue. So we can just see blue. how this season goes. <laughs> this was your first call tonight, wasn't it? My first call ever. How I'm did a, it go? Did I'm you have fun? I'm a true freshman in the a broadcasting true freshman. industry. A true it, freshman. It was amazing and I'm very excited to be able to call future games here. Well, we're so excited. This has been WCBN Sports Radio. My name is KG Foley. And my name is Mary Kuznir. Thanks for tuning in. Peter Nasser alongside um, Noel Bensi for the second half here live from Chrysler Center, Ann Arbor, Michigan. The Michigan Wolverines women's basketball team, their single exhibition game this season as they ramp up, get started for the 2023-2024 campaign, taking on the Cardinals of Saginaw Valley State University Division II school at the GLIAC Conference. And Noel, 51-23 scores as you'd expect with a Division I team facing a Division II school. But like, what are you looking f What are you looking to take out of this exhibition game as we were right around, basketball's right in the wrong corner. The regular season starts Monday against Purdue-Fort Wayne. And with the turnover that this Wolverines team has had, what are you looking forward to? First, like overall, just overall in this game being an exhibition game, what are you most looking forward to seeing? Well, Peter, before I answer your question, I just want to thank all our listeners today for tuning back into WCBN FM Sports today against uh, Saginaw Valley State. The score, like you mentioned, is 51-23. to And this is the first game of the season, Peter. I think it's – we are a brand new, brand new spanking team. Mm -hmm. You know, there are only about three returners from last year who came back. So – the thing about exhibition games is they are just an opportunity for the team to get their feet back in the water for the season without any consequences of what happens in this game. Mm -hmm. It's kind of expected, you know, they, Saginaw Valley is D2, but I think that they're putting up a very strong game. I agree. It's very intimidating coming in and playing this caliber of a team, regardless of the season that Michigan is expected to have. So I think this is something that is beneficial for our female Wolverines, but I think it's a learning experience to see how the kinks are going to play out and how to fix them for the start of the regular season. And you mentioned like what Michigan's expected this season. They're, fi they're projected to finish fifth in the Big Ten in a very good Big Ten conference. We saw it last year, some of the stars that are coming out of this conference in women's basketball. And for the Wolverines losing their top scores, as uh, mentioned in the first half, but seeing the new transfers today, we have the three main transfers coming in. Lauren Hansen out of Mizzou, she's got seven points on the after on the evening, two for four from the field, two for two in line. She's got two rebounds as well in nine minutes. I was really looking forward to see how she's going to gel as the starting guard for the Michigan. Another uh, another transfer in Taylor Williams out of Western Michigan moving two and a half hours or so west from east from Kalamazoo. She's got four points on the after on the evening. And then the third transfer. As well as uh, besides uh, and we also had the fresh Macy Brown Miss Woman Miss Michigan basketball winner out of East Grand Rapids High School. So just seeing all the new pieces fitting in with Layla Felia, who's the leading scorer for Michigan. She's at 18 points. She's looked really good. She's been really efficient as well, 7 for 11 from the field. So yeah, it's, it's just an exciting time, like you mentioned in Noel, just to see how the new pieces fit in in a time with no stakes. Kate, Coach KBA in her 12th season, she can fiddle with lineups, toy with different things, what she likes, give everyone opportunity. We've seen all, all the freshmen come in as well and get some minutes which is a really exciting thing with the season just kicking up so soon. It's been such a fast semester, and it's hard to believe that basketball is back, but it's great to be here in Chrysler. I think having basketball back is one of the best things that this time of the year has to offer. 
Um, beginning of November is probably the toughest for students at University of Michigan considering we are in the middle of midterm season, three weeks left until Thanksgiving. But going back to our Lady Wolverines, the, this exhibition game is definitely an opportunity to see the way that their dynamic really clicks on the court uh, with um, with Layla Filia kind of taking the lead from Leah Brown last year. You know, Leah Brown is now playing in the WNBA against Connecticut. We see kind of that lack of leadership that I think needs to be uh, hashed out in this exhibition game before the start of the regular season. Otherwise, there's, otherwise there's going to be too many gaps and holes um, within communication for the Lady Wolverines tonight. I don't think tonight is going to be that much of a challenge considering the score right now, but I think they need to take their score of 51 to 23 and kind of slow down the game and kind of, instead of using all their momentum as fast breaks, you know, getting down the court, breaking the press, they need to relax and kind of use this opportunity of the deficit to push forward and practice their plays mm -hmm. and kind of see how, and practice communication because as soon as this game is over, and we go into next week on November 6th for the, for the first game of the season against uh, Purdue-Fort Wayne, that's when we're going to start seeing a little bit more of competitive, uh, competitiveness um, against our, our opponents. And then, again, going into the Big Ten season, we're going to ha they're going to have to kind of fix the kinks now rather than later. And this is a perfect opportunity to fix those kinks, as you said. And and get the get the offense going with the newcomers, with the with the returners. As we we're just getting started, getting ready to get going here in quarter number three. Once again, sports 51-23 in favor of the Wolverines. Saginaw Valley will be starting us off here. And we are underway here from the third quarter. Saginaw Valley at the point. Good job picking up, the, forcing a pickup of the dribble. Solemn will hand it off to Massey. Massey's going to try and drive it on Taylor. Plays it back out to Solemn. Out Massey in the corner for three. Drives inside with her right hand towards the baseline. Well defended. Time run running out, and it's well defended by Michigan. Ball goes out of bounds, and Michigan with the first stop defensively. That was a good defensive possession there. Yeah, we see Michigan's defense kind of slowing it down, saying exactly what I said to do in the uh, during halftime. So we're going to see how they do in the start of the second half. Taylor Williams looking to inbound as she turns it over, though. So Saginaw Valley will get their own offensive opportunity once more. Shide will play it out to Jones. Alicia Jones at the free throw line brings it back, drives inside on Williams, plays it out to the point of Solemn. Solemn on Solemn here. It's been a fun matchup to see the two sisters dueling it out. Solemn from the short corner, hits it off the side of the backboard, gets her own rebound, ball's loose on the ground, picked up by Taylor Williams, who's gonna take it up the floor herself. Two on one, she's gonna drive inside, makes a move in the post and she finishes. Taylor Williams has looked really good inside for the Wolverines here early. I think Taylor Williams is gonna start stepping up a little bit with the lack of leadership on this team. She only has four points this season, but regardless, I think she's a, she's a big man and big man always tend to have the most eyes on the court. Mm -hmm. And with that experience coming from Western Michigan, where she was all MAC honorable mention, so she's got experience going up against some top tier comp composition, um, competition, excuse me, and we'll see um, her how she fits in in the Wolverines front court. Ball will be taken out of bounds by Saginaw Valley. Meredith will be receiving the inbound. We're waiting on something. The officials are waiting on something going on. Uh, it doesn't, I Might be a timing issue. Yeah, I believe it's either a timing issue or a review of a play. It looks like we're oh. going to be good to go. Eight. And we are. We'll get back in play. Don't know what that break was, but we're getting it back up. Jones looking for Meredith. Meredith at the three-point line getting a screen from Solomon, but Meredith will take it and draws a double in the corner. And she is trapped in the corner, forced her to just throw it off of Williams out of bounds, so she will retain possession for Saginaw Valley. I go back to what I said before about Taylor Williams. She seems to be everywhere all at once. You know, she plays under the basket, but at the same time, she's on the on the 
on the wing coming in to trap and helping her teammate. And I think we have a scoreboard issue. I think that's the, what we're oh, holding I up. I see. Yes, yes. With the clock issue. Now they fix it. 8.27 to go. Saginaw Valley will inbound it from the deep corner near their own bench. It's Jones. Well pressured by Felia. She's forced to pull up a three as shot clock expired, but rebounded by Massey. And Saginaw Valley will reset with a fresh shot clock. Massey will drive it inside with her left. Gets around Felia. Kicks it out. Three-pointer for Meredith is off the iron, no good. Rebound fought for, and Felia will pick it up for Michigan. Felia plays it in the corner for three. It's no good. Williams grabs the board inside. Plays it out, and the Wolverines will reset. It's Hansen inside to Williams. Williams fighting through some contact, and a jump ball is drawn. It seems like Michigan is playing, we saw before, a they're crashing down on the board, you know. They're they're pulling their defense more toward the more toward the basket solely because it seems like Saginaw Valley is having a little bit of difficulty shooting from the three point line. So Michigan's pulling back and protecting their rim a little bit more than than anticipated. I agree as Michigan turns it over again. They've dive for on the ball. Williams getting using the effort to keep the possession with them and Layla Felia will control at the top. One second on the shot clock, pulls up a three and she hits it. Layla Felia. I mean, with Layla Felia, that brings it to, I want to say, her 21st point of today's game, of the 56. So she's definitely taking the lead out there and not allowing Saginaw Valley to close the deficit that they've created. And Michigan forced a turnover, but they turn it right back to Saginaw Valley. And on the break is Meredith, who will lay it in. Correction, that was Alicia Jones who puts it in. So Michigan has been a little sloppy, a couple turnovers here. 56-25 is the score, though. Clock ticking, seven minutes to go here in the third quarter, and Michigan turns it over again. Good um, hustle. Shy will get it out, and, and Saginaw Valley will reset. I think the reason why we're seeing it be so sloppy is because uh, Michigan's head coach just put in three, uh, three girls off the bench. So it's kind of taking a little bit of adjustment for them to get on the court and kind of adjust to you know, playing on this in this atmosphere with these girls. And Macy, Massey um, got the layup to go for Saginaw Valley, and Layla Feely responds right away on the other end. Jones will take it out for the Cardinals. Jones slithering between two defenders but can't get the layup to fall, and Feely grabs another board, and she's going to push it forward. Upping the timing, hits, looks into the corner. Hansen inside and a foul called inside. They're going to call on Solemn. The first of this quarter and her fourth. So she's got to be careful. They're going to take her out. So Michigan will get it underneath. At least stuck checking in for the Wolverines and offensive foul before the inbound. So Michigan with the turnover here again. Now it's on Camp Schrader. Michigan's second foul of the third quarter and Saginaw Valley will get it. Letting the motion go through to Massey in the, at the three point line cross court into the corner. It's Stafford, Stafford will lay it up, can't get it to fall loose. Kicks it back out to Massey. Matthew waiting for a Stafford screen, doesn't use it, but drives inside with her left, a little too strong on the layup, doesn't get it to go. And Cameron Williams with the rebound to Macy Brown, the freshman. Brown will kick it out, looking for Cameron Williams in the short corner. Backs in, is Williams, can't get it to fall, gets her own rebound and puts it back in. Saginaw Valley coming up with some pressure, and trying to get something going. It'll circle around. Inside looking for Massey. She's forced out. And it's well defended by Elise Stuck. Massey drives down the sideline. Passes it across. Lays it up and in. is no good as Walker. The kick out. Massey's going to drive again. She's driving but being stopped and forced out a lot by this Wolverine defense. Walker fires it with the timeline expiring. Doesn't get it to go. Didn't hit the rim, so we're going to get a shot clock violation. That's a well-defended possession by the Wolverines. We're seeing a lot of uh, tight man from the Michigan Wolverines. 
you know, it doesn't seem like Saginaw can really is really having any of their shots fall, especially rebounds or especially, um, excuse me, especially fast breaks and mm -hmm. layups underneath the basket. So Michigan is really kind of taking advantage of that, taking advantage of their spastic uh, offense, considering that they are down so much, and not letting them uh, and really playing tight on their man, playing relatively okay help defense. I wouldn't say it's exceptional, considering we have a couple girls lagging like one or two seconds behind um, from the shot being taken on the corner. But like we said before, they're doing that on purpose. Um, they're doing that on purpose to because these girls can't either shoot or or drive a layup. Mm -hmm. So. Um, we see a lot from this Michigan defense. I think they're kind of adjusting well, especially during this exhibition game, which they're kind of finding strategies now that they can eventually use uh, in the regular season. Yeah, as we got some dress like Wolverine game. I've never seen this here at Chrysler's and a new event. We got two two fans trying to wear different Michigan clothing as fast as they Look can. Look at them. They're so cute. Putting on the shorts. The girl on the right is winning right now. She gets to the free throw line, putting on it looks like some some nice Michigan wow, shoes. Oh, I want a pair of those. And they're going to go for a layup. And, oh, the girl on the left gets it in. What a comeback. I didn't get the names. Just for clarification, these kids were, like, maybe five or six years old. Very fun. <laughs> five or six years old, putting on some... Uh, Michigan gear as they ran up the court. A lot of fun here in Carcer Center. A wonderful way to kind of start the season off. Uh, exciting for what's to come this season in basketball. Uh, it's a it's a wonderful night here in Carcer Center. Kind of not not as busy as we would have hoped, you know, from an, from a season uh, first game of the season. So we're gonna we're gonna hope for more for our Michigan women's team, but. In the past, we haven't really had wonderful turnout for the women's games. So hopefully this year, they can get their record to where they start bringing people out. But we'll see. I mean, they're a young team, and they're continuing to rebuild. Might take a couple years for that to happen again, because unfortunately, women's sports, in order for them to get a crowd, they got to start performing well, which cannot be the same said for men's sports. <sighs> so <laughs> uh, it's exciting to see what's to come for them. But regardless... It's, yeah, a I, it's a wonderful night for, for basketball. It is. The Saginaw crowd, they took the hour and a half trek south. They've showed up here as well. I think it's a big opportunity for Saginaw, you know? You know, there's not many uh, not many opportunities where you get to come into Division I Big Ten Chrysler Center. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful place to be, a wonderful court, a lot of beautiful facilities, a lot of staff. I'm sure I'm not – I can't say I've ever been to Saginaw Valley State, but – it's a nice campus. I've been up there. Yeah, yeah. They got a nice little campus. Okay. But is it the caliber and the size of the Chrysler Center that they got? I've never no? been in their arena. Okay. It's definitely not as big. But they've definitely showed up. They put good pressure on Michigan. They forced a lot of turnovers themselves. So, And they have, obviously, last season, an, a, an average year finishing around 500 in the, for the – and losing in the GLIAC tournament in the second round. Peter, I want to talk about one specific player that we've kind of mentioned mm -hmm. a couple times. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Taylor Williams. Uh-huh. What do you think about her? She's 6'2 from New Baltimore, Michigan, and she's a freshman, I believe. No, excuse me, she's a forward, not a freshman. And she has the highest number of rebounds of this entire game. Yeah, I really, I really liked her, the, the transfer from from Western Michigan, New Baltimore native, about 40 minutes mm -hmm. southwest of where I'm from in Port Huron. Shout out Port Huron. But I really liked her, how she's she's been working the glass a lot. I really enjoy her um, moves in the post. She's um, only shooting three for seven, so she's had a couple misses. But just getting inside and and using her repertoire, her arsenal in the in the low block has been fun to see, and I think she's going to be a a really important presence in in the interior for Michigan this I, upcoming season. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I think it's really refreshing to see somebody who kind of has like the same caliber of skill set that Nas Hillman had. Mm -hmm. You know, Nas Hillman was a little bit more powerful when it came to driving the ball, when it came to starting plays. That was just solely because of the position that she had as yeah. point guard. Um, and it's always a little bit different when you when you co try to compare. It's like trying to compare apples and oranges. Mm -hmm. Trying to compare a forward or a big with um, a point guard. It's like it's you can't really do it. 
but in terms of uh, in a way that you can try to is they both are playmakers. They are both there in support. Mm -hmm. They find holes within the defense. Uh, yeah, within the defense, they secure themselves within their off, within, or excuse me, I flipped that. They find the holes in the opponent's defense, but then always spread themselves out and make sure that they are a presence on the defense is something that I think is refreshing to see from Michigan's defense with Taylor with Taylor Williams. You know, we didn't really see that much with Leah Brown last year. Leah Brown was kind of um, extremely strong in the in the uh, when it came to using the lane, but in terms of defense, she was she wasn't as um, what's the word? She wasn't as present as I think Taylor Williams is, and that's exactly what our team needs. So I think with her on this team and taking the time to really find themselves and build the dynamic is going to be extremely beneficial as mm -hmm. the season progresses. Yeah, she averaged 14 and nine last year at Western Michigan. So yeah. she she knows how to put the ball in the hoop and she knows how to contribute offensively for her team. And I think Michigan's gonna need her to contribute this season if they wanna have a successful year because you can't rely only on Layla Feely who's been dominant mm -hmm. herself today, but you're gonna need more scores so you're back in action here. Lee Stuck will bring it forward for the Wolverines. Saginaw Valley applying a bit of pressure. Macy Brown, the freshman, who I was looking forward to watch as well play today. She controls it. Pressured well, going to drive with her left. Force out, still in the perimeter. Looks inside to Cameron T Williams, who lays it in with her left hand. That's a good finish. Cameron Williams is also another one that's kind of uh, stepping up when it comes to uh, when it comes to playing defense and making sure that re these rebounds um, go in Michigan's favor. Saginaw Valley drives inside. It's Jones. Jones will p fade away and that she gets it to fall from the low block. That's a nice nice play by Alicia Jones. 62-29 now. Cam Schroeder will bring it forward for the Wolverines. Plays it to Stuck. Stuck will get it to Felia. Felia waiting for Cameron Williams screen. Doesn't use it. Drives it herself to the free throw line. Kicks it out. Fires a three. It's Macy Brown. It's no good. Cameron Williams tracks down the rebound. Drives makes a move inside at least stuck or camp shorter excuse me from the short corner can't get it to fall michigan with another offensive rebound layla Felia will lay it up and no good cameron williams finishes what a possession by michigan there multiple opportunities stuck with it and gets the layup to go saginaw valley um, pre putting the pressure on bring it forward themselves it's sanaya walker who will control it at the point on the block m picks up her dribble Looking inside, and that's a good layup by Alicia Jones. She got through on the, in the key and got past the defender, wide open in the block, and laid it up and in. That was beautiful ball movement by Saginaw Valley State. Just want to They add have that. some good had some good ball movement. Michigan will bring it inside Macy Brown to Cameron Williams, who lays it in right away herself. A little quick one-two action there. Michigan well defending. It's at least stuck guarding the ball handler Michaela. We see um, Sanaya Walker really trying to use her speed against Michigan's defense, but it, she doesn't really seem to be penetrating past, uh, I want to say, the free throw line solely because our team is just so much larger than Saginaw Valley can ever can ever go up against. Yeah, she's only had she's only she only has two points, Sanaya Walker, and that's I think her strong suit. She's really Michigan is kind of shutting her down. Uh, they're always kind of trapping her in the in the top of the key. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how she can kind of adjust to break Michigan's defense, but we'll see if that happens. Michigan controls now. We got some some new new faces checked in for the Wolverines. It's Lauren Hansen driving inside, plays out well defended, forcing her out. Looking inside to Cameron Williams, off the glass and in. Cameron Williams has looked good these last few minutes. She's got 12 now on six of seven shooting. Another beautiful drop step by Cameron Williams. I love watching her play. She's so dominant in the paint. She has been today. Like I said, six for seven from the field. She's been hitting her shots as we got a travel called well defended. Michigan forces a turnover and they will get the possession once again. You know, I, I I think when we watch basketball, it's kind of hard to call the best players the ones who score the most. But in reality, I think the best players are the ones who can use their body in a way to kind of make plays when there are none to be made. And I th that's Cameron Williams. That's also Taylor Williams. 
um, the way that they kind of use their body to facilitate movement is absolutely very impressive. Yeah, I agree very much so. Driving is Lauren. Can't get it to fall. Cameron Williams looks for the rebound. Couldn't get it tipped off her hand. The Saginaw Valley will get it. Whistle blows. Foul called. It's going to be the third on Michigan in this quarter. So no bonus yet for either side. It's only the fifth foul total in this quarter. So relatively clean third quarter here. The Saginaw Valley will inbound from right next to their head coach. Michaela swings around Jones. There's Dizgowski. Tries to swing it around the perimeter. Good cross move and inside is Jones, but it's defended and blocked out of bounds. Taylor Woodson, the freshman, got a hand of it on the layup, forced it out of bounds. Saginaw Valley gets it with just eight seconds to go on the shot clock. Bounce pass inside and then gets oh. the layup to go. The Michigan's giving up a little bit of inside the, in the paint. It almost looked like Lauren Hansen was a little lost in that last play. You know, she was trying to find her defender, but then also prevent the ball from being inbounded. As Cameron Williams with a really nifty spin around inside the block and gets it to fall. And then Taylor Woodson tipped a pass out of bounds. Another beautiful play again by Cameron Williams. We're gonna see. Yeah, but we've been really hyping her up in this quarter and well, well deserving. I think it's, it's well-deserved. The second leading score for the Wolverines. She's got 14 in this game. Fires a three to Michaela. Whistle blows though. I believe she was fouled. You, you know, I think I kind of have a bias against the post players, Peter, because in high school I did play forward and center. Mm -hmm. So it's just seeing the way that like I wish I could have <laughs> been. The skill that these girls have is just so impressive that something that I could never do at myself 5'8". So <laughs> that's all I can say. <laughs> Ooh, another drive inside is, is Jones, but she's Oh, a little fade away and she gets Jones the hesitated Jones on that really one. Good. She could have kept she could have had that if she just kept going and used her body to continue, but yeah. Michigan's defense kind of stepped in and stopped her there. And forced her to fade away, but she hit the tough shot. She's got ten. So Michigan controls looking inside Crock kick out Cam Schroeder for three. Got it to go. Michigan's definitely using their heights kind of over. It's almost like they're lobbing this ball over Saginaw Valley's head because these girls can't catch up or even get the height to catch this ball. And that was Lauren Hansen for three, number one, not number 11 on the three. The Saginaw Valley gets it with four, six seconds shot clock, game clock by difference, but they turn it over. Lauren Hansen's going to push it up. Four on three if they hurry, but they're going to settle down, wait for the last shot. Ten seconds to go here in the third. Lauren Hansen's going to... Holds it, waits for a screen, goes the opposite direction. Oh, said screen. Now she'll use Cameron Williams' as screen. Kicks out. This time it's Hobbs for three. No good. And that's the end of the third. 73 fit 35 to score after three quarters of play here in Chrysler Center. In beautiful Ann Arbor, Michigan, as the Blues Band gets ready to play here. One of my favorites here. Oh, yeah. The Blues Brothers. I believe that's what it's called. Not sure if you guys can hear that, but it's a wonderful feeling to be back in Chrysler Center hearing this. It's great to be back. We got the women's exhibition game tonight. We got the men's exhibition tomorrow against mm -hmm. Northwood that will also be here covered on WCBN. Then we got the football game Saturday. And then we're back here at Chrysler for uh, Monday, Michigan women's against Purdue Fort Wayne. Tuesday, the men's against UNC Asheville. It's that time of year we got all the winter go. sports starting up. We got hockey this weekend as well. We just everything's just coming together. And if you are just joining us for this Michigan versus Saginaw Valley State exhibition game, we want to welcome you to WCBN Sports, where the score now is 73 to 35. Once again, my name is Noel, alongside Peter, and we're very grateful you guys are listening to us tonight. We've had a wonderful, wonderful game uh, here tonight with Layla Felia leading Michigan High with 23 points, whereas Jessica Massey is leading Saginaw Valley State with only 10. We have Cameron Williams lead second behind Layla Felia with 14 points, and 
with 14.5 rebounds. So it's it's been a very, very functional and dynamic game for our Wolverines tonight. They're really kind of fixing the kinks that they have within every position. They're throwing in the girls that are brand new to the team, the girls that don't really get much playing time considering the score is 73 to 35. They really got nothing to lose tonight unless Saginaw Valley comes back and makes, I don't want to do the math, makes a 35-point <laughs> return, something like that, 37-point return. Yeah, 38. 38, okay. I think. <laughs> I think. So we're going to see, I think, uh, hopefully head coach will, will put in some more new girls, get them some experience, because I think after this game and a couple more, they're going to start having to use their, their starting five for the rest of the season, <laughs> considering that they're not really supposed to be uh, anticipated to be that great. So. Yeah, all but, w all but one Wolverine who's, who's gotten in have scored so far, but we'll see if how this fourth quarter will shake out. Saginaw Valley will start with possession. Drives inside is Massey and she's gonna get fouled and go to the free throw line to shoot two. Jordan Hobbs is gonna get charged with her first foul of the evening. You know, Michigan and Saginaw Valley State kind of have a very similar um, free throw percentage. Saginaw Valley, ha Saginaw Valley State has 75%, whereas Michigan only has 80. And I think there's two things in basketball personally that win games, and that is defense and free throws. Mm -hmm. And if you can't make your free throws, there's no way you're winning this game. So I have to say, Saginaw Valley State has done a wonderful job with m with making sure. See, after 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 Meredith number 20 Meredith just made her two free throws, the score the percentages are now 78 to 80. As Lauren Hansen with a nice bounce pass to Taylor Williams, who gets the default. You're right, both teams have shot the free throw well. Michigan shot 77% last season. You're looking for a similar free throw percentage this season, especially as you said, free throws win games in this sport. Offensive foul charge, so Michigan forces a turnover. It's gonna be called on Riley. That's a team's first. And Michigan has also shot the three-pointer well today, which is important in this age, day and age. Seven for 15 from beyond the long line. A very efficient percentage compared to only one for 11 for the Cardinals. Michigan will inbound in front of the, the Cardinals bench. That was a beautiful full court press break. Woodson drives inside herself and draws a foul and she's gonna go and get two shots at the charity stripe. I think Saginaw Valley is starting, or Saginaw Valley State is starting to use that tactic to where fouls are good. Um, I know the time isn't nearly near that yet, but I think they're trying to slow down the clock and kind of get the get the game rolling with, it's either they're doing that or they're getting spastic and they're just fouling all over the place because they don't know what else yeah, to do. And that's a fifth foul for Lauren Sol yeah. Solom. So she her evening is done. It's gotta be good for her facing her sister here at Chrysler Center. That must be amazing facing your sibling in college sports. You know, it's it's so difficult to even break ground in college sports that playing against your sibling must be a wonderful experience. As Taylor Woodson, the freshman, hits both free throws on this trip. She's four for four in the evening. Five points total, or six points now make it for the freshman. So Saginaw Valley looking to set up an offense. It's Jones, I really like Jones' shiftiness as she's gonna look inside, but she turns it over here. Michigan will pick it up. It's Crockett. Tried to pass it uh, deep to Williams, and it's turned over, and Saginaw Valley will reset. Massey looking to use the screen, drives inside, tries to get into the paint. A little hesitation. P um, dumps it off to a driving Meredith in on the baseline, and she draws a foul. Meredith does, and she's going to go to the line. We've got a lot of free throws here in the... This first minute 25 or 15, minute 15. I think Saginaw Valley is so used to kind of weaving their way through defenses in Division Two, and I think in Division Two they might have a great job doing that considering their ball movement. But trying to do that against the Michigan Wolverines has been very, very difficult for them considering the Wolverines don't move in the post. Like all they have to do is just stand big and stand their ground and those Saginaw Valley girls are not getting in there. They're not, they have to, so Saginaw Valley State has to start adjusting to using the outside, but they might not have that good of a, of a shooting range. 
And Saginaw Valley hits both free throws. Lauren Hansen breaks the press on her own and drives inside. Misses a layup. Cameron or Taylor Williams with a follow is no good. And then a loose ball foul charged on Michigan. It's going to be on Crockett. So an empty possession there for Michigan. Michigan seems like they're pulling back and just doing half court uh, defense right now. No pressure. So we're going to see how they do in this, in this next play. And they're setting up the half court in man right now. Inside Safford drives in on Taylor Williams and she gets it, can't get it to fall. Good defense by Williams who's gonna take it herself. And Mission will slow it down. Hobbs is open for three from the top of the key and she can't get it to fall, gets her own rebound. Lauren Hansen had an open three, decides to slow things down and set it up. Looking inside to Crockett, Crockett posting up. Layup is no good but foul called. Little hook shot. Couldn't get it to fall, but there was some contact inside. And Michigan will go to the free throw line. You know, Lauren Hansen kind of seems like the smallest Wolverine out there, but she is right now at 10 points on the on the court, which is quite impressive considering the deep dynamic that this team has. Yeah, Crockett can't get it to fall. Yeah, Lauren Hansen, a transfer out of the University of Missouri from Mizzou. She averaged 12 and 12, two and 12 and three on the year last season for Missouri, mm -hmm. and she's got 10 today in this exhibition tilt. The mission goes one for two from the line, and Saginaw Valley will get set. Brings it around the perimeter, Jones. Jones looking to looking inside, can't no one there. He's gonna use a screen. Jones is gonna pull up for three, can't get it to fall. It's a little long there, rebound Crockett. Mission gonna pull it up with pressure. Layup is good. That was beautiful. By Crockett, Hobbs. Crockett kinda came up the field a little bit shaky. You know, she's she's used to playing uh playing forward, so not really not really a point guard, but she passed it in and it made the bucket, so it's. And then Jones throws the pass a little long and forces a turnover. So Mission will get the ball. Maggie Kinsley checking in for San, for SVSU. And Layla Felia coming back in for Michigan. Coming in for Taylor Woodson. Yeah, I think they gave Lila Feely a nice deserved break considering she is, she's got 23 on the board right now. It's Crockett at the, at the point, she's gonna look to Lauren Hansen. Hansen's gonna drive inside with her left hand, lays it up, no good. Loose rebound, fought for, picked up by Williams. Williams will lay it up, can't get it to fall, but gets mm. fouled. She's gonna go to the line. She's been aggressive on the offensive glass. Her third offensive rebound of the night She's got six defensive rebounds. She's got eight and nine. Eight points, nine rebounds. That's a pretty nice even distribution that she's got. Eight points, nine rebounds. It shows that she's a really kind of well-versed player and doesn't really lean toward one side offense or defense. So can't she can't get the first one to fall. Place. Yeah, you're right, but can't miss the first one. She's 0 for 3 on the line today. Free throws win the games. Gets that one to go. So it's 81-39 here. As we're just over, just under seven minutes to go here from Chrysler Center. Beautiful Thursday evening. Here inside, beautiful Chrysler Center, Saginaw Valley. Gets it trying to set up. Mission defending well, force it back up to the perimeter. Driving inside and looking as Kinsley. Kinsley will lay it up, blocked out of bounds. Well defended there with Crockett. But Cardinals will retain possession on the baseline with seven seconds left on the shot clock. Inbounded in, five seconds left on the shot clock. Pump fake is Kensley and then she'll fade away, can't get the roll. But Mich or Saginaw Valley, excuse me, will get the rebound to sh Shied who will play it out to Kensley, who's gonna drive inside. Ooh. Draws the charge. Well defended by Hobbs, sitting in there, taking the charge. 
forcing the offensive foul and Michigan will take over. As the Cardinals fifth foul, so Michigan will be shooting the rest of the way, shooting free throws the rest of the way. Hobbs will get the inbound pass and bring it up. Saginaw Valley applying some pressure, but they'll back off. Hobbs getting the offense set up, looking. Get to Lauren Hansen near the Michigan bench. Taylor Williams up at the point. Trying to get to Feely as she does. Feely a well pressure, but Feely's gonna drive inside with her left. Pulls up, fires it short. Rebound Williams. Williams underneath because she gets blocked by Walker. Walker is gonna use her speed and try to bring it up the floor quickly. She's gonna be forced to set it up. Saginaw Valley for three, misses everything out of bounds. I'm not sure if Hobbs is just kind of uh, being put on the back burner this game or if she's just not really stepping up for her potential because last year we saw a lot of Hobbs. We saw a lot of her. She was so high scoring and she was always in the help defense, but today she's only got five points and three rebounds. So we're gonna see if this is gonna be common or if she's gonna kind of step into that role a little bit more now that Leah Brown's gone. And this is, and this is a perfect opportunity to get, get feeling for first game back after a nice summer where Mission the Wolverines were out in Europe getting some some reps yep. in out there during their summer trip, which is always cool for the for the players to get some action and some reps against some really good competition across the pond. First free throw is no good by Taylor Woodson. She does not she misses the second one. Solemn fighting for the rebound and helps Michigan get the rebound, so they will get another offensive possession. Solomon inside on the block and she can't get it to fall, but she's gonna go for the, to the line and she'll get a chance to get on the board. She's a lone Wolverine who's not scored of those who have entered, so she has a chance to put her name in the box score with her sister. I assume her family's here as well, supporting both of them today, which has to be a fun treat for them. First free throw goes for Solemn. Have we confirmed that the Solemns are related or is it They are things? sisters. Okay. They are. Can't get the second to fall. Rebound is loose and Michigan will get it. Macy Brown to Hobbs. Hobbs will drive inside with her left. Good bounce pass to Solemn who gets it to go. Hobbs heard what you said and had a really nice bounce pass mm -hmm. into, the, into the low block for an easy deuce for Solemn. 84-39. Saginaw Valley, good dump themselves, but they can't get the layup to fall, and Solemn with the rebound. Played the four to Taylor Woodson. Woodson gonna take it, use her speed, gets Ooh. by, can't get the layup to fall. Solemn with the rebound. Macy Brown for three, can't get it to go. Mission aggressive on the offensive glass, another offensive rebound. What effort and hustle. Macy Brown has a swing pass, fires a three, Crockett, no good. Another offensive rebound. This time it's Taylor Woodson. And Michigan will reset. Solemn at the elbow. Plays it across to Hobbs. Hobbs looking. Drives inside with her left. Lays it up. No good. And a possession with many opportunities comes up empty. But you really like that effort Michigan has been putting in even in the late stages of this, of this exhibition game. Saginaw Valley looked inside. Foul called on Crockett. Michigan had, I counted, they had five separate opportunities on offense. That's five separate times that these girls had to put in their whole heart to get that ball back on possession with nothing resulting from it. Like that effort is what you want to see and especially at the stage in the game we're in right now, 84-39, four minutes to go, 13 seconds in a game that doesn't count. None of these stats count. They're not gonna show up anywhere else after today. But this is the effort you want to see. Michigan has 25 offensive rebounds and only 21 defensive rebounds, but they're really attacking the glass on both ends, especially offensively. 46 total rebounds on the day. And those are the those second chances, those third chances are going to help you win games against the tough Big Ten teams that Michigan will face. All, they'll obviously want to capitalize more so, and they have many times. They did it on that one possession where they got five offensive rebounds themselves. But this fourth quarter, they've really crashed the glass well. 
And as we're in the media timeout, the under the under five media timeout here in this final frame. I think, you know, I, I like calling with computer solely because you are more of a glass half full kind of guy. <laughs> and I will stick with your with your glass half full for a little bit. I will maybe positive. maybe they are just tired from putting up eighty four points on the board. But turnovers they do have 15 layups. turnovers. That is correct. So that Turn is something that you'll want to clean up going into the games that count. Turnovers, miss layups, and miss free throws are going to make you lose. That's just, I don't want to say scientific because I got no data on that. But it's almost calculated to where if you don't get those three and if you don't capitalize on every single play, you're not, this is where they need to clean that up which is why I'm kind of happy that this is happening during the exhibition game rather than during a Big Ten tournament or against Ohio State or, or Purdue because that cannot happen in a conference game. They cannot because they're, they might have five chances now, but they will not get those five chances again. So they better clean that up now in order to go into the Big Ten and 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 lose all those opportunities because you're not going to get it. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. This is a team, I'll give you that, this is a team that has raised the bar. Coach KBA, 12th season, which has made the tournament the last five years. The bar is set high, that the expectations are high for this program. And, and I like that you, you want that bar to be met, even in an exhibition game. I like that a lot. Saginaw Valley will control here as we're, under, as we're reaching the four-minute mark in the final frame. Tipped out of bounds. Saginaw Valley will retain possession, but good hands there by Crockett. Michigan in the bonus. So we're going to see how they continue in this next play. Saginaw Valley will inbound from near the baseline in the corner. Three-pointer right off the inbound is no good. Rebounded by Crockett. Foul on the loose ball. And you just mentioned the bonus. Crockett's going to go to the line to shoot two. Beautiful. Let's see if they make it. Crockett's three for four from the line today, so this will be her fifth and sixth opportunity. Not to mention their free throw percentage has dropped from 80 to 65. 65% to 13 mm -hmm. for, make it 14 for 21. All right. She gets the first one to fall as Crockett, 85-39. There's some 15 points away from the century mark. I've also been very impressed with Crockett today. She has gotten a lot she has prevented a lot of turnovers for this team which is very impressive for somebody of her size and stature and she's at five and six on the five six and four nice little balanced out stat line only in 17 minutes of gameplay Mao is passed it across but tipped out of bounds and Saginaw Valley gets tur turns it over mission on a 9-0 run this last 418 Saginaw Valley has turned the ball over a number of times these past five minutes. They've been on a little scoring drought themselves here. At least stuck at the point. Hands it off to Macy Brown. Brown's going to drive inside and can't get the layup to fall. Rebound Cardinals. We're going to push it forward. Putting it forward. We got the Bink. Bink lays it up. Can't get it to fall. Loose rebound stuck. Stuck will push up herself. We'll see how aggressive there she'll slow it down pick up her dribble and set up Crockett will set up the offense three minutes to go here and Chrysler Center solemn inside to a uh, cutting Crockett but it's tipped away and Taylor Woodson will reset it 10 seconds left on the shot clock Crockett open for three can't get it to fall misses it short contact on the rebound Crockett going for it and it looks like they're gonna put Crockett on the line as she was going for the loose ball in the corner and got tripped up Peter, as they set up this next play, who do you think has been exceptional in this last quarter? In this last quarter, I, I really like how William, uh, how Solemn's looked. She's been really aggressive. She's got three points, four, six rebounds, most of that in this quarter. She's been really aggressive, trying to show her sister up a little bit too. It seems like she is kind of taking the role of the Williams, you know, Cameron and Taylor. <laughs> they both are out in this in this quarter and she's kind of stepped in and taken their position being everywhere at once. Yeah, she's been very aggressive all over the place. 
had a pass there to set up the the shot that was resulted in the loose ball foul. Michigan hits both the free throws though. 88-39. SVSU will bring it up. It's Alicia Jones drives inside with her left, tries to kick it out, but Michigan forces the turnover, suffocating defense on Jones. She was surrounded by three Wolverines and forced to kick it out and turns it over. Macy Brown looks inside to kicks across the three. Macy Brown back in the perimeter. Drives inside with her left in the paint. Kick out to the top of the key. Pump fake Schro Camp Schroeder and gets the jumper to fall from the free throw line. 90 to 39. Looking for the back door cut with Michaela, but she couldn't, they couldn't get it to her. Or Davis Gowski, excuse me. I have to say, regardless of the deficit in the score right now, Michigan 90, SVSU at 39, Michigan has still given up 40 points in this game. It's not like Saginaw Valley is in the dust. They've, you know? they both, both teams have competed well, and that's what I've really been impressed by on both sides, specifically with Michigan, just the way they've been competing here late in a game that's been out of reach for the majority of the or the contest, but it's just about getting that those good reps, those, those uh, important game reps. You're facing your team, your same players all summer, and now you get mm -hmm. to face some actual competition. Macy Brown plays it inside, looking for a post up. Camp Schrader dumps it inside. Oh, and a blocking foul is going to be called. I think Stuck was posting up. Sorry, sorry, Noel. No, that's Stuck right. posting up and draws the blocking foul, so she's going to go to the line and shoot two with a minute 45 to go in this final quarter. I think they're both teams are kind of using this exhibition game to showcase the strengths that they have. Because like we said before, this is not a game that really means anything. There's really no consequences to being here in terms of the score that goes into the, the schedule. But it's definitely, there's consequences for the way that you play, which is why it's such a huge game for these girls and why they're all playing so hard because they have something to prove to their team, to themselves, and to the coach. Yeah, so. Stuck missed the free throw. Taylor Woodson got the rebound and put it back in. And we have a foul on the inbound pass at Saginaw Valley. Was looking to dump it inside, but foul called. It's going to be on, Cre on Greta Camp Schrader. That'll be her second. And the fifth for the Wolverines, so the Cardinals will get two from the free throw line. It's going to be Michaela Mao at the line. Trying to get on the, she's trying to get on the board, and she does her first points of the game. She'll get one more. Tino Valley is 11 for 13 from the, three po from the free throw line. And their season kicks off on the 10th next week against Northwood, which is a team that the Wolverines men's team will be facing in an exhibition tomorrow here at Chrysler. Stuck will control it. Looking inside once again, another foul as Michigan attacking the post. And Michigan will get two free throws. I believe Williams, Cameron Williams is gonna be the one shooting here as she was posting up and got fouled. It's kind of hard to use exhibition games as metrics for how they're going to be with the rest of the year because it is a good way to showcase their skills for each player, but it's going to be kind of difficult to see how this team molds together with all the transfers coming in and if it's going to take just one year, two years, three, four for these girls all to get acclimated together. It's it's only time will tell. You know KBA is gonna be, has been working hard all summer and throughout this early portion of the season to get that perfect lineup, the mix between how she's going to, we'll see what lineup she brings out today. I don't think the lineup we saw today is going to be the lineup we'll see on two, on Monday. We will see though. It'll be exciting to see how Michigan fills in those, uh, those holes left from, from the losses from last season. Saginaw Valley in the corner for three, can't get to go. Rebound Michigan, it's Woodson. One minute to go, Woodson slows it for a second, but Michigan's gonna push it up for a second. Down low in the post, out of bounds though. So Michigan does turn it over here, 53 seconds left. I think even though this game is not on the books for any reason, 
KBA is going t- is kind of taking her own metrics and she's going to use what she sees today as a way to set up the lineup for for their next game on Monday. Mm-hmm. Diving effort Cameron Williams and she's going to draw the jump ball. That effort has been here for all 40 minutes of this game. The possession arrow points in the Wolverines' favor, so they will get possession with 38 seconds left. Macy Brown will bring it forward. We'll see. Assuming she will take up as much shot clock as she can as we are in the waning moments here. This exhibition win for the Wolverines that will be Macy Brown going up against Jones. Plays it out to Camp Schroeder. To Taylor Woodson. Woodson waits for the screen from Williams. She gets the screen, but she'll lose the ball. Whistle blows. Ball went out of bounds. And with nine seconds left, Saginaw Valley will get one last chance to to change the score line here, but Jones will bring it up. Drives inside, makes a nice move, and gets draws a foul with 1.8 to go. Jones will go to the line to shoot two. Just formality at this point, but these the are important reps for every these are important reps for everyone as That's what my dad likes to say. The mm-hmm. game's not over till it's over. First free throw rattles in. If anybody listening to our broadcast tonight is a Detroit Lions fan, Go you Lions. know it's never over till it's over. That's very true, but the, that's going to be it. Free throw does not fall. Macy Brown with the rebound, and the Wolverines finish off the exhibition game with a 95-41 win over the San Saginaw Valley State University Cardinals. An uh, impressive showing overall. I think overall, you... Wolverines fans should be happy with what they saw and there are obviously going to be mistakes made little little errors here and there, things to clean up but you have this game to do that and then as the season gets going overall though uh, an impressive showing for the Wolverines in their single exhibition game of the season any final thoughts Noel before we head out well, tonight it was a, definitely a ha- hard-fought battle between SVSU and their Michigan Wolverines. We had Layla Felia leading on top with 23 points and five rebounds. And then we also had Taylor Williams leading with nine points and ten rebounds. So this was definitely a very, very exciting game for our Michigan Wolverines tonight. It was... I think the biggest thing about this game tonight was the fact that it does not count and it's not in the books, but regardless, the effort that both teams showed tonight was exceptional. Mm -hmm. Saginaw Valley State came in as a D2 team facing Michigan as the D1. You know, they have the name behind their their team, so coming into this kind of environment is very intimidating for a team like Saginaw Valley State. But regardless, they held their ground. They used their strengths. The score for this game does not mean as much as the way that they all executed their skills because regardless of that the way that they played is going to translate into the season Mm -hmm. so they have to put their entire effort into every game that they play and now KBA is going to use what she saw tonight to set up for the rest of the season and use the strengths with this new with this brand new team The transfers that came in, the way that they're all going to gel together is something that is going to be very, very exciting to see in these next coming games. So we'll see you again on WCBN Sports for women's basketball on Monday, November 6th against Purdue Fort Wayne. It was wonderful calling with you guys tonight. Thank you so much for listening. On behalf of myself and Peter, we want to thank you so much. Good night and go blue.